Stampers Kim from StampingImperfection.com. Welcome to my craft room. I have five stamp or five different cards I want to show you using this layered dahlia stamps from Whimsy Stamps, and it is I love this. This is uh, each floral image and each leaf image has three different layers. So I'm starting with this big dahlia, and I'm starting with the solid stamp image and. Um, this is going to be the bottom layer or the the background image and um, or the background part of it I should say and I pulled out this um, I think it's called sweet shop Alta new set I'm using mostly Alta new inks today I'll use some Catherine Poolers but I'm starting out using this mango smoothie color and I think this is really a fun combination of inks this is one of the sets that they sell it's a set of four and they layer beautifully together so the bottom set is this pretty yellow mango color so I'm, I'm inking that up and I um, stamp the two pieces at one time using my misty love my misty the second layer I, I put on there this was pretty easy to actually line up I have to say sometimes you get the the layered stamp sets and they're very difficult to let to line up this one was not bad at all so the second layer I'm using a color called peach parfait and I'm adding a little bit of a moss green ink to just the leaf area and the third layer that I'm using there is going to be cotton candy it's like a pink color pardon my head there so um, I discovered that the two top stamps didn't both fit at the same time so I had to do them separately so uh, I stamped those separately but isn't that pretty like it's very subtle it's a subtle color combination and um, I actually really like the way this came out and again I'm just adding a little bit of that moss green color just for the stem to give it a little bit of you know it, I'm not trying to be realistic really at all I just wanted a little bit of green in there now I'm going to take out the, um, the the leaf layers and again I'm starting with the solid layer that's the base layer and I'm using my lightest color so I put my lightest color on the bottom and in this case that's bamboo and I'm gonna stamp that and then I moved those two stamps there's, there there were two different leaf images so I moved those around and I'm leaving some space in the center because I have a sentiment I really want to use on this card so I'm gonna just stamp these two again with that bamboo color the lightest color that I'm using out of that set of greens and this is another set of four inks that layer beautifully the second layer I'm using is called parrot ink and I'm only going to use three um, ink colors from each of these sets the the other set that I used with the cotton candy the peach parfait and the mango smoothie has a dark chocolate color to go with it so it's quite nice and then the top layer of course is that moss ink because I really love that moss ink now I'm going to pull out a, a set by Catherine Pooler and this is a set I just recently got so I was pretty excited about it and this one is called find joy and this sentiment says find joy in the ordinary and I love that absolutely love that sentiment so I'm going to put this right in the middle there because I left some space so I could stamp over my image and leaves a little bit but I have a lot of white space there just for the sentiment so I'm just lining that up in the center otherwise I would have done some masking and added some more leaves or maybe added some of the smaller buds that came in that um, whimsy stamp but it's, I love this. I love it when they combine, when stamp designers combine fonts. I just think it's really pretty. Like, I think I write that way too. I print some things, I write some things, but I just thought that was beautiful. So, I love the find the joy in the ordinary. So, I, I want to keep this really simple. I just want this to be a one layer stamp, or one layer card, 
and I love single layer cards, but I do want to do a little bit of a watercolor wash background. So I pulled out this beautiful Lagoon ink. This is one of my favorite Altenew colors. Like just, it's so pretty. I considered using a light blue. I often use a light blue wash, but I just wanted something, I don't know. I just wanted something with a little bit of green in it. I was just in the mood for this color. So I always smush a little my ink pad. If you watch my Technique a Week video so far, the first one shows uh, this technique and I spritz it with my, that's a distress sprayer. What a great tool. Let me tell you, um, that gets used every time I stamp, whether I'm using it to clean up my surface or do techniques like this. Like it's just wonderful. And it's like five bucks and you know, you only need one. You don't need a whole bunch of them. You just need one. So um, I'm just going to paint this in and I'm going to go all around the image. And I'm using a pretty small paintbrush here. I think this is a four round brush. It's either a four or a six, um, you know, whatever size you're comfortable with. A lot of times I'll use a really large brush for this, but this Dahlia has a lot of little nooks and crannies and I'm not, I'm trying not to like hit my image. I want to get all those nooks and crannies, but if I leave a little white space, I'm okay with that. Because remember, those inks are dye inks, which means they are water-based, which means they're water-soluble, like dissolves like. So dye inks with a water base will dissolve in water or react in water. And I don't want that to happen. Um, sometimes I want it to react and I'll spritz it with water and get it to react, but I don't want to mess up the stamping I just did. So I'm getting all the nooks and crannies all inside, all the little parts in there, and just doing this very carefully. And uh, in a minute I'm going to just go to the end. Here we go. I didn't think you needed to watch this whole painful process. You get the idea. I, I try not to have like this perfectly smooth blended color. I like the watercolor look and I think it makes a really pretty background and I sort of tried to make it diagonal across the card and then since I had the pool of water watered down ink I just used that same brush and made some splatters and you can see I'm just flicking it. I fill the brush and then I just flick it against my finger. This works beautifully. Using a smaller brush will give you smaller um, splatters using a larger brush will give you larger larger ones now this i wanted to add uh, some white splatters and i'm trying to get those on the flower and the watercolor background this is an alta new ink spray and it's in pure white i just gave it a good shake and then i just did the same thing i just dip it in there and start um splattering against my finger now i have to say i know i'm making a mess here I make much less of a mess using my ink spray in this way than actually as a spray. And I have a box just for spraying. So I'm going to put some of this in the white area too, which you can't see on the video, but you can see it in person and I really like the way that it looks. So you know, like I have to know when to stop here. This is a good point for me to stop. Like it's one of those things. So in between each of these cards and a lot of the steps, I clean up my space. I'm working on a silicone mat from um, Altenew. They have two different ones. They have a grid one and this one. I like this one. The grid, because it's silicone, doesn't actually stay really, um, you know, square. So you want to be careful with it. I like it, but um, I think this. they just came out with this one and it's so pretty. So pretty to work on. So I'm going to, for my second card, I want to do a, a just a blended, ink blended circle. And I pulled out this um, template that I got from Brutus Monroe. And I think that scrapbook.com also carries them. Um, it's like a stencil material. And I'm just taping the background one down. It also has the circle piece. So you could do the reverse of this. You could make a white circle and then blend around it if you wanted to. So I'm using some washi tape to hold that in place and I'm going to pull out one of my um, picket fence blender brushes and I'm just, I pulled out the biggest one. I don't know why. 
I guess I wanted to get this done quickly. Now I'm going to try to do some ombre blending. So I want it to be darker in one on one side and lighter on the other. So I'm just going to um, lay down some ink here and um, just blend it in. And then I'm going to work on making one side a little bit darker than the other. Now this paper I'm working on I don't love. Uh, it is it's Nina Solar White and it's 110 pound. I love how heavy it is and I love it for stamping. I do not love it for ink blending. I prefer ink blending on Bristol paper but I had a whole bunch of this cut so I'm using this. I love this for card bases. I love it for boxes. I just, it, you know, I, I just don't love it. I love it for using my Copic and Altenew alcohol markers but I don't love it for ink blending. It's just not that smooth. It's got a little bit of a rough texture to it. And that, by the way, is Volcano Lake. It's in the Lagoon set, and I love that. But you can see I have a darker blended to lighter, so I have that nice ombre look. So I'm going to put this in here, and I want to do a silhouette look on this one, because those solid images are will make beautiful silhouette stamping and the silhouette by silhouette stamping I mean leaving my um, images just stamping them in black so these are solid stamps so I'm going to play with this a little bit and decide you know what kind of layout I want to do here I know I want to use the solid ones and there's there are two of those little buds but they both bend in the same direction and I really want one to bend in the opposite direction for the other side I don't know why my OCD feels like mm, I need it to do that. Now I felt like that big one was just too big so I pulled out the smaller bud and I feel like the stem is a little short but I'll extend that later with my alcohol marker and um, I'm going to use a mirror stamping technique to get that bud flipped over. So I'm pulling out my Catherine Pooler Midnight Ink. I love this ink. I love Altenew's black inks too. Um, but recently I started really using this Midnight Ink and I just love it. And um, so I'm using my Misty in case I don't get a great stamped image, but pretty much with that Midnight Ink, I get a really great, with Catherine Pooler inks in general, I get a really great stamped image every time. So what I want to do is I want to flip that over so that it's stamping in the other direction. So I'm pulling out my um, mirror stamp and I got this from Whimsy Stamps. Whimsy Stamps has a rubber version and MFT Stamps, My Favorite Things Stamps, has a clear stamp version. So if you like using clear stamps, you can order the one from My Favorite Things, mftstamps.com. Um, and order it on a Wednesday. They have all kinds of specials on Wednesdays. Um, and, you know, use your wish list at MFT Stamps, too, by the way, because they have a lot of good deals. You get a freebie if you have, like, a $60 order. Usually it's $60. It changes from time to time, and there's a certain limit that you have to spend to get free shipping, and then they have coupon codes if you go over 100 bucks. So, you know, Wednesday is Blitz Day there. This is the Whimsy stamp I was talking about. It's just a solid rubber stamp. Perhaps you have something like this. You could probably use a gel plate. I've used um, plastic sheeting before to do this mirror technique, but since I got this, I will use this. And this is the first time I'm using the rubber one. So I'm putting this down kind of upside down. So that's upside down. I'm flipping it the way I want it to. Now I'm going to just, I'm going to actually ink it up. And like this is, I'm trying to figure out how can I ink this up without making a mess on my paper. So I'm very gently inking this up and I'm actually going to um, put it on my lid there and then I'm going to try to very carefully not get this all over my hands and just transfer it. I'm not doing a, uh, you know, I'm not sure why I'm doing it this way but I didn't make a mess surprisingly so I'm just going to put this 
rubber stamp down over the top of it and just push down gently. Now I've inked the image onto that rubber stamp. So I'm making sure my paper is in place, my cardstock is in place in the very corner. And then I just flip this over and push down and lo and behold, I've got the mirror image. So now I'm just gonna take my one of my alcohol markers, my black alcohol marker, and I'm just gonna extend these down a little bit. And I, I liked the little pointy tip, so I decided I'll do this with all of them and just extend it a little bit. I really like the silhouette look. I could have done like a sunset look, you, you know, you've seen that a lot, but I just love this particular uh, color of ink, that lagoon and the, the volcano lake and the other ones that go with it. There's an emerald one and I forget what the other one is called, but they're very pretty, that set of four. And I just picked two of the shades that I, you know, I didn't use all four. So I'm, I'm pulling out, I just got a new stamp set from, I'm saying that a lot lately, right? I'm just got, I've just got too many new stamp sets. So I can't order any for a while, but I couldn't resist this stamp set from my favorite things, MFT stamps. This is Happy Hummingbirds. I loved the sentiments. It's got a thinking of you. It's got quite a variety with sympathy, best wishes, thank you, I'm sorry. Thinking of you, happy birthday, may your day be filled with love and joy. So I decided to stamp it on the card because I was really trying to make this one layer, but because I extended those um, stems down into the white, I didn't like the way it looked. So I created a, um, an, a lay, you know, I can't think. A sentiment strip from that. I just re-stamped it on a piece of scrap white cardstock, cut it down, and I'm just using the leftover ink to very gently, I don't want that ink to get on the top, I'm just trying to like just put a little bit of that that lagoon on the edge of the card just because it shows up a little tiny bit and I like it. Like I just really like this. So I will pop that other sentiment that I just made up with foam tape and then I'll put it right over the one that's there. I like where I placed it, but I didn't love um, how it looked. It didn't show up enough. Maybe if I'd done it in like silver embossing powder, but I was really trying to keep that silhouette black image, black sentiment. And I'm just using a sanded eraser here to remove some of the ink that I got on the front there. I didn't want to do that. So I'm going to pull out some foam tape here. And, and um, oh, I f almost forgot I also like splatters on everything. So I'm using, and I actually got a few splatters when I spritzed it. Move your card first um, before you do that in case you, you don't, you have spots you don't want splatters to go. I'm using a big brush because I, I like big dots, big splatters. And um, I think I like splatters better when I leave more white space than when I cover the whole thing. So there's a, there's a technique to splatters. And I think I got too many on this card, but I still like them. Somehow I, I feel like it pulls the card together. So I just want to make sure I get that sentiment covering up the one that I already stamped and that's going to complete that card. So I've got these two cards completed, completely different cards. They don't even look like they were made with the same stamp set and I used sentiments from different stamp sets but you know I still am using the same stamp set to create the main image. So back to the layered dahlias. Now this is my third card and I'm just still using that same Nina Solar White 110 pound and I picked all the images that were not solid images. I picked the middle images of the detail and then I picked the outline images here. I just wanted to, I want to make a background. So I'm just covering the whole background. I'm just putting the um, stamps down. I like when they go off the cardstock a little bit. Um, so I try to like make the stem go off or make part of the floral image go off. So I'm going to use my Versamark because I'm going to heat emboss and then I'm going to use those same, uh, the lagoon and the, vol is it Volcano Lake or Volcanic Lake? Volcano Lake inks to blend again an ombre background over this um, 
embossed image that I'm creating. Now remember that when you heat emboss something, that embossing resists the ink. So the, the white embossing powder will show. Um, and I, I always love this. So I'm adding some white embossing powder and then I'm just going to use my heat tool and heat set this. Give it a few flicks and call it a day. There we go. Now I'm going to heat set that and clean up and then I can do my ink blending. So that panel is from the Totally Tiffany embossing station. I love that embossing station because I put my um, card or card, in this case, card front on there and then I um, hold that under the embossing tool and it, I don't have to hold the embossing tool. I really like it. It's more comfortable for your hands, really. So if you have like arthritis or any issues like that, then it's a that's a really nice little tool. So and totally Tiffany has a lot of sales. So again, I pull out this is the lighter of the two colors. I'm using the Volcano Lake. And I'm putting actually quite a bit on there. So I just am, I want to cover it. And you can't see it, but where it looks white, I actually have a very light layer of that volcano lake. So I'm just going to continue doing this until I get the ombre effect that I want. And I'll use my brush to pick up some of that ink that's on the silicone mat. It's one of the beautiful things about the silicone mat. You can take your brush and pick up that ink. But you also do need to care be careful because you can take your hand and pick up that ink too. And then when you touch your project, you can get it smudged. So you want to be careful there. So I, I want it to be pretty light on one end and pretty dark on the other. So pretty. Isn't that just a beautiful color? It's a green. It's a blue. It's just pretty. So I'm going to um, just clean up here. And then I created another one. I was thinking of you. That's from the Happy Hummingbirds MFT Stamps set, My Favorite Things Stamps. And it, this worked a little bit. So I'm just bending a little bit. Now, if you feel like your paper warps too much when you heat emboss something, just run it through your big shot. Just put it between your two cutting plates. Put a piece of paper over the top of the front of your card in case you have any sticky or any ink or anything like that that you don't know about on your cutting pad. But run it through your, um, your big shot or I actually have a Spellbinder Platinum that I use here and just run it through that and it'll flatten that card out pretty well for you. If you run it through a couple times, maybe you'll need to put a paper shim or something to give it a little bit more pressure, but it does a beautiful job straightening out your card. And I'm just going to put that sentiment down and this is so easy and I like to have one side of the sentiment line up with the edge of the card and the other one not line up with the edge. So I really like that. It's super simple. Now you'll notice I'm not putting my card fronts onto card bases. I've stopped putting my card fronts onto card bases until I'm ready to send them. So when I send them, then I attach it to a card base and um, decorate the inside if I want to or, you know, fill out the card the way I want to. So for my next card, and I think this may be my favorite one, I've been watching a lot of Vicki Booten, and she's doing a lot of mixed media. So this is a piece of watercolor paper. I could have used mixed media. I think I probably would have um, liked this technique on mixed media paper better. Mixed media paper is smooth, so um, it's not it's hard to emboss on or stamp on. Watercolor paper has, has a little bit of texture, and I'm using this little pad of Strathmore watercolor paper, um, and I'm going to use the whole sheet because with this technique, I have not done this on a card before, so I, I do this in scrapbook, on scrapbook pages, um, but I haven't done it on a card. So my plan is that all those things that look like they should be sticking off the top of the card, are that top part is going to get cut right off. I'm going to cut that off. I want them to go off the card, and I want to leave a lot of room to do that dripping watercolor technique. 
So I'm going to emboss this because again, I'm using the embossed resist technique. So I'm going to use my Versamark ink and I'll ink this up really well. Now on watercolor paper, I find that I have to actually ink my stamp and stamp this multiple times, like three to four times depending on um, how smooth my cardstock is. And this is not super smooth cardstock. I like to watercolor on watercolor paper that's got texture on it. I just love the way it looks. So it's more problematic when you go to, like sometimes I put this in my printer and I'll print out an image like a digital, if I'm using a digi, a digital image. Um, but also when you're stamping on it, you have to do it multiple times. So that I put white embossing powder down, I heat set it. Now it's a little warped, so I did run this through my um, my die cutting machine. And now I'm going to tape it down to this little board I have. This is actually a cutting board, and I didn't like it as a cutting board. So it became a board that I paint on. And I kind of like it for this. Um, I actually have two of them. I liked it so much I got a, a second one because sometimes I have more than one project going. And I'm going to tape this down and make sure that it's super flat. I'm sort of stretching it as I go along. So I am using three Catherine Pooler inks here. My three, if I only bought four Catherine Pooler inks, it would be Midnight Black, Sauna, Rockin' Red, and Suede Shoes. This is the Sauna. And I'm going to put that yellow in the middle. And I'm just using a big paintbrush. And I really tried to water it down so it would drip. This works better with the Vicky Booten or Distress crayons, depending on what kind of so crayons you have. So I'm going to spritz it and help it along. So I've got my little spritzer bottle. And it, that added enough water to the um, bottom of that panel to give that some trail to run down. Oops, sorry about that. Um, so I'm going to leave that and then I'm going to put some blue suede shoes on there. I just love these bright colors. I think Catherine Pooler's colors are so vibrant. And I just re-inked all my Catherine Pooler pads. My all-to-new pads really need to be re-inked. Um, so that will be a job I do next weekend. So I'm adding the blue and I'm trying to overlap it so that blue and the yellow give me a little bit of green. And again, I'm going to spritz it on the bottom. And I, I'm holding, notice I'm holding my board up so it runs down there. So I'm going to just take the a, a little bit of the yellow, another little bit of the blue, mix them together, and make that more green more um, exaggerated because I didn't, the yellow dried faster than I expected. So I'm going to add a little bit more green. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the red. That's rocking red and um, put it down the side. I'm just going to fill into the edge there and I'm going to add a little bit of extra paint or ink there to the bottom so when I spritz it some of it runs down. Now I'll mix a little bit of the yellow and red together to get more orange because I didn't get enough orange from the overlap. So I'm going to add a little bit of orange there. And I don't care how neat those lines, I'm not trying to make neat lines. I the messier the better as far as I'm concerned when I do techniques like this and um, this works really well this technique with distress crayons or Vicki Booten's got some art crayons and they're fabulous now you can't see what I'm doing but I mix the blue and the red together and I got purple and I'm putting it to the right of the blue so I have the rainbow there so I'll just clean this up I'm going to clean the bottom of my board because it's dripping all the way off and I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to like let this dry for quite a while. I actually like gently just put a paper towel down and dabbed it but I want this whole thing to dry and I'll, I always take a whenever I do any resist technique I buff the embossed parts so I let that dry overnight actually. Um, and when I pulled off the tape, I really loved this. I thought, boy, I could, I could frame it if I, you know, stamp something different there, because I've got a lot of weird space above the top of it. 
because I was planning on cutting it. I want this to be four and a quarter by five and a half. So I'm just going to cut this down. I know I need to cut about a quarter of an inch off the bottom. So I'm cutting this down to um, four and a quarter by five and a half. And I didn't end up leaving very much purple or very much red, but I really like the way this came out. I thought this was really pretty. I think this is a pretty technique and it's pretty really pretty in scrapbook pages. So I'm using some of this Barely Art glue and uh, I didn't bother putting one of the little um, they have special like nibs that come on there. I just open it up. Um, I, I like the glue a lot. I don't love that I have to put new, new nibs on. Um, that, that little container of different size applicator tips is just not going to last on my desk, I'm sure. Um, but I really decided I would use the glue because I think that's going to hold it down the best. Sometimes when I use double-sided sticky tape, it's hard to get it flat enough. So I'm pushing this down, and I like this glue a lot because it dries clear, and um, it gives me a little time to wiggle things around and then it takes a few minutes to dry. So I'm pulling out two of my clear blocks. These are Catherine Pooler clear blocks, my very favorite clear blocks in the whole world that I've tried so far. Um, but I'm gonna just lay those on there to add a little weight to make sure that that doesn't buckle. So I've got another one of these Thinking of You um, sentiments, and these are all heat embossed in white on black cardstock, and I'm just trying to decide where I want it to go. So I'm just being a little fussy and trying to see where I want to put that and how much I want to cut it down. So I've decided where I want to trim that down. I'll add some adhesive tape to the back of it and um, then I'll pop that up. And by the time I get the sentiment ready, that glue will be dry and that paper really did come out perfectly flat. Now, if you have not tried this 3M tape, I, bought, I buy that from an electrical supply company. It's like $35 for a roll, and it lasts forever. But what great tape. I still love this. I've been using it for a few years. It's only my second roll. Nope, it's only my second roll that I've had in a couple of years. And I love it. It lasts a long time, so it's a good value for me. So that completes my card. You can see I added a few bubbles to that, and um, I decided to throw in one more card because I'm a design team member on the Papercraft crew, and we have a sketch challenge every week, and we would love to have you join us at Papercraft crew. You're cordially invited. So I'm putting down, I'm using the sketch, and the sketch is a pretty um, pretty classic sketch I would say the the sketch calls for like pattern paper or something on the bottom and um, so I want to do some ink blending because I I've got the inks out and I am trying to use the same materials um, for all of these cards so again I'm using the volcano lake and the lagoon and I'm using the same brush I oh, Nope, I pulled out a smaller brush here. But I just want the top of that card to be white. That's why I put the washi tape down. And I'm going to be very careful next to that tape so I don't go over it. And I'm just going to spend some time. And again, I want the top part of it to be darker. And then I want to do a nice ombre look. So I'll keep blending till I get a nice smooth finish. And um, I will add some of that lagoon to the top part of it to make it a little darker. And I'll just keep blending till I get that light, nice light finish. And a lot of times I find that if I finish off with the light color to just blend over the top of the whole thing, you get a pretty nice blend. I do know that I am going to spritz this with some water because, again, the dye inks react with water. So you get a really nice effect when you spritz it. So this is the Lagoon. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And I didn't even bother cleaning the brush because this is the darker of the two colors. So I'm just going to 
go ahead and go along the top of that because I want a nice crisp line when I remove that and I want that top to be definitely darker so I don't want it to be quite so dark in that one corner so I'll work on that and just keep blending it and a couple other elements in this card it does call for um, something where I have the washi tape I won't use that washi tape but while I'm doing this, I'm thinking about what I want to do there for this one little element. It really calls for like a piece of washi tape or cardstock or something like that in a sort of crooked way. But I'm not sure I'm going to do that. I'm trying to decide whether maybe I'll just use a big sentiment or you know something. So I'm, I'm just finishing up this blending and I'm okay with the way that came out. And I used a lot of the ink off my table there. I'm going to put that aside and I'm pulling out a piece of scrap paper that I have and I'm now pulling out my whimsy stamp and this time I'm going to create another layered look but I'm going to use a different set of colors and um, I still am going to use the lagoon in the volcano lake for the um, the leaves here but I'm starting with the lightest color in this set and it's pink pearl, so pretty. And when I do this, my ink pads are very dry. This is how you know your ink pads are dry, when you have to ink it twice and you push down so hard that you actually lose all the detail. So I just flipped my paper over. This is, you know, leftover paper from some project and I'm gonna redo it, but this time I'm not gonna push down so hard. I'll stamp it lightly twice. And notice that just before I did that, I wiped off the stem with my finger and I do at the end forget to do that so I end up with a little bit of pink in the stem but that's okay it doesn't make any difference it doesn't need to be perfect I let perfection go long ago and I live a better life for it so I've got that base it's a, such a pretty color I love the pinks and the corally pinks so I, I um Notice that I I have the original Misty and the Mini Misty. I use the Mini Misty the most, but if you only get one Misty, get the original because notice that I use that for the techniques where I was either using larger paper or where I wanted the stamps to hang off the edge. I use the larger Misty. So if you use just a small one, you won't be able to do that. And that's one of the benefits of the Misty, I think. So I forgot to wipe it down there, the stem. So I have my pink stem. So now I'm using the second color. This is Coral Bliss. This is just so pretty. And I pull out that Volcano Lake just to give the stem a little green. And it, you know what? It turned out okay. You can't even really see much of the um, pink pearl there. So now I'm putting that top layer on and I'm going to use the Vineyard Berry. This also has a darker red color called Heartbeat, but the Vineyard Berry is almost like a wine color and it's, it's very pretty. It's got a touch of purple in it and you can kind of see that there. So it's almost like a burgundy. So I'm using the uh, Lagoon for, this is the outline stamp. So you know that stem came out okay. I'm okay with the way that came out. Isn't that pretty? Like the detail is just so pretty. It's such a, like I tried, actually tried watercoloring this. Don't do that. All those little tiny things like, you know, you need a lot of patience to do watercoloring if you're going to use those little tiny things. And um, I'm not going to spend four hours on a piece, to be honest, at this point because I like to create a lot of different things. So um, when I, the, I just stamped the outline image of the leaf in Volcano Lake, and then I took this to my die cutting machine, and I used this, um, this is called Crafter's Essential Kit and or Set, and this is a die cutting set, and there's more, it's got all different shapes, and they've got stitched outline, but there's more on the back of that set too. This is a huge set. And this is some, it's from Cat Scrappiness and um, lovely. I just love this set. I use it quite a lot. But that circle with the stitching was just the perfect size for that dahlia. I cut off a little bit of the leaf. I'm okay with that. And I'm going to put some foam tape on the back of that. I'm trying to decide 
you know, I'm really sticking to the sketch this week with the exception of, um, I'm not putting the, this tape at a wonky angle. I think this is, uh, Stampin' Up! from Stampin' Up! I'm not exactly sure where this washi tape came from. So I'm pretty sure it came from Stampin' Up! with, during Celebration. So I don't know if, I doubt they still have that. They're always retiring things. So I put that down. I actually like it. I think the bumblebees are perfect. And what I like about it is that it's got a little bit of metallic gold on it. So I'm going to go ahead and put some foam tape on the back of this and pop it up. So I'm being very fussy about where I put this. So why am I being so fussy and how it's turned? No wonder this video is 45 minutes long. I was trying to decide why is this video 45 minutes long. So I'm just going to cut this down. So I've got the foam tape on there and I put it aside because I decided that I really do want to spritz that bottom. So I spritzed that which seems like magic because you couldn't see, but I was using my distri Distress Sprayer and I just spritzed it and then I immediately put a paper towel down. But you can see the difference. You can see the like water spots there. I always like the way that looks. I think it's just really pretty on uh, ink blended backgrounds. So now I'm taking that black. This is just a black ink. This is actually Alton is permanent black ink. And um, I'm covering up my piece this time. Just move it, Kim. Just move it out of the way. Why do you think your hand's going to cover that up? Don't ask me why. I know that I splatter when I do this. Why do I just not move it? So I'm using a big round brush because I get big splatters with the big round brush. And I really like big splatters. And the Altenew ink, you will notice that with the exception of that one big black splatter, um, this ink does not make splatters as dark as the Catherine Pooler Midnight ink. So I'm going to stop there and I'll clean that brush up later, I promise. I've had those brushes forever. It's amazing. And I do clean up, at, you know, right away because um, I am trying to keep that relatively stain free. So again, this is kind of damp because I just spritzed it. So um, it's going to warp a little bit. I will send that through my um, die cutting machine and if it doesn't completely, you know, if it doesn't completely flatten out by me putting that, I put the paper towels down because those ink blocks are not that clean. So I created my sentiment while that was sitting and um, that is from an all to new stamp set called Quilled Elegance. And I really like the uh, the skinny sentiment here. And I think this is a really nice sentiment to send someone during quarantine. So I just finished it off by putting the sentiment on foam tape over the line. And then I added some iridescent sequins from Studio Katia. So that's going to complete the five cards. And let me just pull those out so you can see them. These are all from the same stamp set. And look at, I've got two resist techniques. I've got a masking technique. I've got a uh, one layer card and then a second card using the stamp set the way that it was created to be made just with layers. And you know, it, there's a lot of different things and none of these cards look exactly the same. I love that they're all completely different from each other. So thanks for watching. Stop by my blog at stampingimperfection.com. Give this video a like and share with your friends. And make sure you subscribe to my channel and click the bell so you get notifications whenever I put a new video up. Thanks for watching.